Our first story is all about a pair of entertainers in Nashville. One is human, the other is made of wood. The human is named Shannon Shrum. His sidekick is named Rod. Together, they've entertained audiences worldwide while also preserving the art of ventriloquism. You know, when I was five years old, saw these great ventriloquists and said, I want to do that. Yeah, and he's been looking like Donnie's ever since. Shannon Shrum has been a ventriloquist since growing up in rural Colorado, throwing his voice and eventually catching laughs from audiences around the world. And for most of those years, he's worked as the straight man beside the same wisecracking funny guy. Well, I'm Shannon, this is Rod. Yes, indeed, uh, my name is Rod and I'm made of wood. What kind of wood? Oak wood. Oak wood? Yeah. Uh, what's your sister made of? Oak wood? Yeah. And your dad? Oak wood? I got a cousin, he's all mixed up. What is he? Particle board. If you're a longtime Nashvilleian and this pair looks familiar, well, there's a good reason for that. Many years we were out at Opryland and, and just had a great time doing our show, working with all the great legends in the show business. Yeah, we were very blessed. We got to work with some amazing people like Minnie Pearl and Linda Lee. Yeah, Porter Lagerner. Oh, they're all the legends. Yeah, and they learned so much from them, too. You didn't got That's Minnie's right. hat over there. We, we do. We do. We actually do. Yeah. Shannon and Rod also worked as the warm-up act for the old Hee Haw show. Why, they even made it off with the show's trademark cornfield. This room in Shannon's home is like a personal museum, full of artifacts and special memories. It has been a lifetime of collecting, and um, you know we we just love spending time in here. It's 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 surrounding yourself with things that make you happy. That I think is important. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's not really like a like a man cave. You know, it's like a puppet parlor, puppet parlor. Yeah, because you know. Uh, he plays the dolls. Well, you cut that out. Entertainers have been playing with dolls for centuries. And while the exact origin of ventriloquism is debatable, we do know it gained widespread popularity in the 19th century. A man named Fred Russell was regarded as the father of modern ventriloquism. But it was none other than Edgar Bergen who earned the most fame and fortune. You know, no one has ever achieved greater heights in ventriloquism than Edgar Bergen. You know, I mean, he was just a superstar in his day in the 1930s and for, for many decades after that. Um, so there was a lot of merchandise. Uh, Edgar Bergen and uh, Walt Disney were the two kings of merchandise in the day. I'm pretty smart. Pretty smart. I can, I can count to ten. Count to ten. One, two, three, four, five. Count higher. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, cut that out. Shannon is so good at this form of stagecraft, you almost forget he's sharing his voice with a dummy. He's not really an extension of your personality. He's like a different person to me. Well, he's, he, he seems like he, he's just, he's everything that I would like to be, and he says everything I would like to say, but I couldn't. Yeah, so I'm the one that gets away with it. Ventriloquism might have been only a hobby for Shannon had he not been inspired by Russell Scott, a.k.a. Blinky the Clown. Blinky was a clown in the 1950s when children's television shows were popular. Blinky was in Denver, and I grew up in Colorado, and I watched Blinky on television. Yeah, Blinky really got him into the business. That's right. Yeah, because he watched him every day. Every day when I was a little kid. In fact, I was on his show. No kidding. I was on his show in Denver. In Denver, yes. And he would sing happy birthday to the kids every day, and it was just a blast. But that one moment, that one experience, just inspired me to go into the entertainment business. The two became close friends, and Shannon, who's also a talented artist, created this tribute to his hero. Spent about four and a half months painting that, and I wanted to use the Norman Rockwell style yeah. um, because yeah. I wanted it to tell the story. There's so many elements in that painting that um, are connected to parts of his life. That is Jerry Lewis as the Nutty Professor. And this is Shannon's workshop. While entertaining is pretty much on the back burner these days, 
Shannon spends a lot of time in here creating puppets and puppet pieces for other ventriloquists around the country. Yeah, I do a lot of uh, puppets. I, I paint puppets and I build puppets. Um, a lot of times they'll just send me the, the finished puppet head and I'll paint it. Shannon has enjoyed an incredible career as a ventriloquist, a performer and craftsman, making people laugh while preserving some of the history of this timeless entertainment art form. We're just saving them to preserve them for somebody else to take care of them in the future. Well, it's good to meet you, Roy. Nice to meet you too, Joe. Yeah, in fact, I tell you what, we love Tennessee Crossroads. It's our favorite show uh, on public television. You took the words right out of my mouth. I usually do. Hey, how'd you like the story? We'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you enjoyed it, we have a lot more where that came from. Here's one you might like. And please click here to subscribe so you'll know when we premiere new videos. Thanks for watching.